Episode 7, Christmas, 1952. The London and North Eastern Railway was one of the so-called Big Four companies, formed during the 1923 Grouping Act in Britain. In this form, with engines from the North Eastern region and Great Northern Railways, it lasted a mere 25 years, but left an everlasting impression of luxury, prestige and speed. Forty years after the end of British mainline steam, these are the stories they tell. Snow came early to the British Isles, and everywhere, on every region, the engines of the British Railways found it difficult to do their work. Unless, of course, you were Tavish the goods engine. Tavish was fitted with a snowplow and coupled up to an old carriage and spent the days clearing the tracks from snow or shine. The snow fell harder on Christmas Eve and Tavish found he had too much work. He'd come back from clearing one line to find another was blocked and it would only be a few hours until he heard of blockage elsewhere. The goods trains were piling up in the sidings with no sign of let up at all. Tavish and Herbert were constantly frustrated with the sheer weight of the trains and Herbert reckoned that he spent more time slipping on the rails than he did going anywhere. It's just n n n not funny, Herbert muttered to Stephen at the junction. The two engines were waiting for their respective paths to clear, and Herbert was seething. I only just j j just got out of the yard this morning, he said angrily, and there was m m m more snow everywhere. Why can't the w weather be good for a change? Because, Stephen said with a smile, this is the British Isles. The weather has always changed like this, every year, for as long as I can remember. Herbert blew off steam, frustrated. There was a whistle from the branch line, and Tavish appeared, dragging what appeared to be a long blue-white mound. The mound turned out to be Alan, who was frozen to the bone and shivering as he passed them. Ooh, Tavish said grumpily, as if I didn't have enough work to do. You go and get stuck in a snowbank. I d d didn't m mean to, t t to. Alan shivered, and Stephen laughed, saying, He sounds just like you, Herbert, except you're not frozen to the pipes. N -n -n no, but I am c c cold, Herbert said, and puffed away huffily. Back at the yard, and the engines were having an indignation meeting. Alan was fired up once more, and looking warmer, but Herbert, Tavish, and even Nigel were cross. All of this snow is taking up my time, Tavish said. We need an oil engine to help me out. Herbert agreed, but Nigel didn't. If we had another engine to shunt about the yard, he said, the goods trains would be sorted quicker, and we wouldn't have to worry about the snow because the trains would go when the lines were clear. Look, but how could the trains go when the lines aren't clear? Tavish replied, and they only stopped arguing when Sir Ralph backed onto the yard, seething with rage. You're there! The little goods engine! A word, please! Whatever you've done, it's not worth arguing, Nigel said quickly. Just agree and puff away. Oh, I'd be having none of this, Tavish said furiously, as Sir Ralph backed down next to him. Why aren't you out cleaning the main line? Sir Ralph demanded, blowing off steam furiously. All of my passengers are stuck in hostels because the line's closed. Oh, there's only so much one engine can do, Tavish responded angrily. I have been working for three days solid clearing the lines, and without getting any help from any of you. Well, naturally, Sir Ralph sniffed, I am not a goods engine. Look, you couldn't be a shunter, let alone a goods engine, you lazy trumped up excuse for a steam engine, Tavish retorted. You're just a heaping pile of scrap metal. Well, I, I've never been so, oh, Sir Ralph hissed angrily, just you wait. Oh, I've never been so in... Stow it, you two. <laughs> Alan had come out of the shed, sneezing terribly. Let's concentrate on the passengers. I have an idea. And Alan told his driver, who told the foreman his idea. The foreman agreed and spoke to Sir Ralph's and Tavish's drivers. Tavish snorted angrily when his driver told him, No way! I will not work with a feeble, feeble, feeble! Sir Ralph spluttered. Hark at the good snowplough thingy. Thingy? Why I oughta? Ah, stow it, Nigel snapped. It's a good idea. 
and we need to clear the main line. Grumbling fiercely, the J-39 and the A-4 Pacific puffed away. Coupled together, back to back, with the old carriage between them, the two engines cleared the main line, and each time Tavish got stuck in the snow, Sir Ralph pulled hard to free him. It was cold, hard work, and the wind blew fiercely over the two engines, chilling them to the frames. It was approaching midnight when their work finished, and they returned to the shed, cold and miserable. Look, I didn't fash where we even bothered, Tavish grumbled to Sir Ralph. It'll just snow again. That's why you cleared the main line, Stephen said, and the engines looked. The signal dropped, a whistle sounded, and the last passenger train of the night puffed past the junction and onwards back home. It wouldn't have done to keep the passengers at the station on Christmas Eve, Stephen remarked, and the two engines looked very guilty. Yes, well, Sir Ralph said, that's... That's very true. He looked to Tavish. Forgive me, Tavish. Your work is very difficult and... Oh, say no more, Tavish said with a wink. You'll be embarrassing yourself otherwise. Sir Ralph gave a rare smile. Alan sneezed loudly. Achoo! He said, sniffing slightly. Well, it's just gone past midnight, lads. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, murmured the tired engines. He went to sleep contentedly.